Now here we have a use case as presented to us. So Nanette, which is me, is a volunteer manager in charge of onboarding and offboarding volunteers. Working remotely makes it difficult for her to provide timely access for volunteers and remove their access as needed with uh, their apps residing in their on-premises environment. Okay, so looking at this, we can see that there are a few points that pose a problem in terms of security, timeliness, and access. The first being that volunteers are not permanent staff and should therefore actually only have access to applications and content on the days that they volunteer. Second, a lot of organizations tend to create accounts that are shared by multiple volunteers, which is not ideal and it actually poses a security risk as there should ideally um, only ever be a one-to-one -one ratio between users and their user accounts. And then lastly also, um, our not-for-profit volunteer manager works from home. So connecting to an on-premises environment means connecting to a VPN uh, to provide the access for the volunteers, which in itself can be time consuming. Or the work from home could pose a risk for connectivity. So, you know, internet lines dropping and therefore timely allocation of resources aren't always possible. And I'm sure this sounds familiar to many of you. So we're going to have a look at a solution that was built to help address these challenges. Now, before I show you that, let's just set the scene. Let's imagine that we have a new volunteer who we need to onboard to our volunteer um, extranet portal. Now, we have multiple different areas that require volunteers to work on it, but we don't necessarily want all of our vol volunteers to have access to all of these locations, but only to where they will be working. In addition, my organization wants to isolate volunteer access in a different tenant and so also keep them separate from our own Office 365 tenant. Now, the app I'll be showing you today uh, is a Power App, which will allow a volunteer manager like Nanette to capture the details of volunteers manually or uh, connect to a CRM solution like and perform bulk onboarding and offboarding of volunteers. So with that, let's have a look at this volunteering um, onboarding, offboarding application. Right, so <clears throat> when Nanette, as the volunteer manager, logs onto this application, she is presented with a dashboard that gives her all sorts of details like the total requests, that have been received, if there are any pending action items like approvals for new volunteer requests that need to be done, we can see that we've got 276 ordered logs that she can look back on and see what happened, who approved it, when the requests came in and so on. And if she has um, any requests that are currently outstanding, they are also listed in here. Now to start by adding off our new uh, volunteer, she, Nanette is going to go onto the onboarding request tab and you can see here we've got a list of all of our um, onboarding requests. I'll see over on the right hand side I can actually go and add a brand new request and you'll see over here we have um, some details that are automatically populated. I can add in my uh, email address for the new user I'll be adding. I'll just add, you know, uh, another user called Nanette. So I'll add Nanette. Uh, listen, last name is live. And we'll go through, you can see we can also add in the company. So which company it is that, um, you know, maybe there's a, an organization that provides volunteers. So we can add those details in here as well. So I'll just go PA. And now I can also add in a mobile number. So I can say, um, and now below this, you'll see we have a volunteer category. Now, this is great. Remember um, when I set the scene earlier, we said that we may have different areas where we want our volunteers to work. Well, in this case, 
having the volunteer category means that um, our workflow can assign particular permissions to this volunteer based on where they will need to work and then afterwards send them a link to that location. So in this case, we want to make sure that we add uh, the user to the volunteer portal where they'll be working. You can see the responsible person, so the person who's ultimately responsible for this volunteer, has been uh, automatically populated. I can change that if I want to. And now down here, I can set what is my start date going to be. So I want uh, the new volunteer to start, let's say, today. Um, but she's only going to help us for one day. So I want her account to be expired tomorrow at, let's say, 6 p.m. So now what will happen essentially is um, we're going to add it now. We're going to go through an approval process and get the account added with permissions. And tomorrow um, afternoon at 6 o'clock, uh, all permissions will be revoked for this user, meaning that they can't log into our system anymore um, until they've been re-enabled. So I'm just going to add a remark in here quickly. Um, we'll just say uh, helping for, for one day and I will submit. So what you'll see here is we've just had this new entry added in. You can see it's added a reference number for us and um, as I've mentioned before, so you saw here, I was, I'm just adding in a single entry, but of course you can have bulk upload of, um, of volunteer um, information as well. So you can pull in information from a CSV file, you can pull in information from let's say a CRM or an ERP system uh, or the volunteer management solution you saw last week. You'd be able to connect into that and pull in um, those users. Uh, in addition to that, this is a great way of, let's say you've got a volunteer that's available from Mondays to Wednesdays every fortnight. That means that you can set up in a CSV file a schedule that specifies the dates that they are available. And uh, by using the start date, it will enable uh, access for them on that day. And then um, um, let's say a few days later, remove those permissions again until they are available the next time. Now let's look at our approval request because submitting has actually now uh, sent a approval request to our volunteer managers. And I can see here, this is the user that I've just added. There we go with the details. And I can go and view the uh, request details here. So I can scroll through. And if I'm happy, I can just say approve. Now, this is where it gets interesting. So um, behind this Power App, we have a workflow sitting as well, and we've got a few lists that are populated. But essentially what it does now is it's going to go to my uh, on-premises Active Directory, and it's going to provision this new user account for me. So once that account's been created, it's going to sync that through to Office 365 online. So it's going to sync the details for the user account through. And once it's there, it's going to apply permissions to this um, volunteer portal. So you'll see if I go onto my onboarding requests, you will see here, if I just view the details of this user, I can see that my account status currently is that it's being provisioned. So I can track the status um, over here. And just bear in mind that adding a user into AD and giving them SharePoint permissions isn't all that this would be able to do. If you had any additional requirements, maybe um, giving the user access to ServiceNow or Workday or an HR application or whatever other application you have, the workflow would be able to hook into that and apply those relevant permissions so that when the volunteer logs on, they have everything that they need. I'm just going to refresh here and just see if my account has been provisioned. Let's go and have a look here again. You can see it has been approved. I uh, might have missed to show you that earlier. There we go. Okay, so my account status is showing that it's been provisioned. So um, it's now gone and given access onto the site. Let's just make sure if I switch my, my user, 
Oh, fantastic. So I'm now in this other account, my volunteer, and they get an email saying, oh, welcome to the volunteer portal. Your coordinator will reach out to you with further details and information uh, about onboarding and your task management. So here we've got some additional information being sent to us the first time we get onboarded. I'll go in and accept my invitation. And uh, there we go. So it's now opening up my volunteer portal for me. So as you can see, we've just gone in, we've added a new volunteer, it's provisioned the account, it's given access to a particular SharePoint site based on our volunteers category, and it's sent out um, a, an email to them with access to our site. And what you see in front of you, just coincidentally, this is a um, SharePoint site template specifically for volunteers um, or yeah, for, for the volunteer portal. And this is uh, available out of the box on all of your SharePoint environments. So if you wanted to, you can easily make use of this template and hook in any additional information that you may want to. Okay, <clears throat> so let me just switch back here. So as you can imagine, this entire process that we've just seen um, has reduced uh, possibly with hours, if not days, the back and forth that you, that you would normally have with IT um, and to make sure that they create the accounts and provide the permissions. And then in addition to this, it being online means that um, our work from home, not for profit uh, volunteer manager does not have to connect to a VPN in order to create anything. Um, all they need is an internet connection, quickly fill in the details on a power app or even from their phone and Bob's your uncle.